Hello and welcome to part 7 of this hex tutorial series. In this video we're going to have a look at if statements. In this video we're going to use booleans um, quite a bit. So if you haven't watched the previous video on what a boolean is, um, then you might want to go back and watch it because it, if you don't know what it is, you might feel a bit lost in this video. Up until now, our, all, of, all of our programs have run from top to bottom line by line and it's always done the same thing no matter what we input or what our variables are set to but if we have a program where we want to change what happens depending on a certain value so for example what the user puts in then for that we would use an if statement so let's have a look at an example from the previous video where we had a variable called door open and this will just we'll set this to true for now and now let's say we want to if the door is open we want to tell the user the door is open what we do is we use an if statement and we do that by writing if then normal brackets and inside of here we just put a variable or an expression or anything that um, evaluates to a boolean. So for now we'll just put in door open because this is a boolean. So now this part is called the condition and if this is true then the following code will be executed and if it's not then it won't. So now um, we're going to actually put the code we want to execute and for this we use curly brackets like we do here and here um, but we'll look at functions and classes later on. So we put curly brackets and inside of here we'll just do sys.println the door is open. And now if we run this, as you can see, we do get an output because the door is indeed open. If we were to change this to false, we get a completely empty output and that's because, because this is false, this is just skipped over completely. This is quite a useful thing in programming and you'll probably make use of it quite often. Um, for example, if you were making a game, you could make it so that if a door is open and the player goes into it, then you run some code inside of here to teleport them to a new room or something. So now this is a bit of an extra thing, but whenever we have these curly brackets, um, so for now um, just in an if statement but later on when we learn about loops and functions and stuff we actually only need these if we're doing multiple lines so let's say we also want to do print line goodbye um, then we need these however if we just have this line we can remove this and it only runs the next line after it and the next the, the if we have another line here then it's outside of the if statement so if we put the goodbye here then this actually this isn't inside the if statement and only the line directly after it is um, it's probably not the best idea to do it like this because if we wanted to put this inside of here now we'd have to go all the way back and put them around. Um, however, if you ever see this, then you know why it's there. So um, that's just a thing to keep in mind. So now let's say that we also want to do something not only when the door is open, but also when the door is closed. So we want to tell the user that the door is closed if it is. Um, one thing we can do is we could just um, copy this, paste it, and then change this to door is closed. And here, instead of saying 
just door open, we put an exclamation mark here. So this just means that um, we, we just use this exclamation mark when we want to get the opposite of a boolean. So if it's false, then it, then this um, statement will be true and it will execute this code. And if it's true, then this will turn it into false and it won't execute the code. So, um, so I'm going to write a comment here saying exclamation mark is means not. So, um, if, so I haven't really, um, explained comments yet. You just write two slashes and what they do is they let you write stuff inside of your code that isn't meant for the compiler to read, but it's meant for people trying to understand your code to read or yourself when you read it later on. So I can write whatever I want in here and it will, it will just skip over when the compiler looks at it. However, it means that our code is easier to read and we have a better understanding of what's going on. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Now, if you look at this, then it should work. And if we run this, then as you can see, we do get a message saying that the door is closed. However, this isn't a very good way of doing it because these aren't actually evaluated at the same time. This one's evaluated first and then this one's evaluated next and that's not really what we want to do. We want to check if it's open do this but if it's not do that. We don't want to say is it open do this, is it closed do that because it's just not very good code. And let's say that the door is open and when it's open we want to close it then we would still run this code because the value has been updated before the if statement is evaluated. We want to do something where we always check it at the same time. So we're not messing around with anything. So instead of all of this, we can just cut it out and then just write else here. And what this else means is that Whenever we have to skip over this, this condition isn't met. This is always the alternate choice. So here we're going to see that the door isn't open. So it's going to skip over this. And instead of just carrying on head down here, what it's going to do is it's going to go into this part and say, that the door is closed. Because a boolean can only have one of two values, then if it's not true, then it has to be false. There's no other possible values in between. So now if we run it, I forgot a bracket here. Sorry. Um, as you can see, the door is closed. So now we, we're able to do something if the door is open, and also if it's not open. And we can do this for any boolean. So here we've used just a variable, but um, like how we did in the last episode where we can set booleans to expressions, we can also just put an expression inside of here that gets evaluated into a boolean. So let's say that we just cut all of this code out. We have var name one equals Bucky and var name two equals Sally and we say if name one is equal to and remember we used the two equals signs um, is equal to name two then we want to say we want to do sister print line the names are the same and now otherwise if they're not the same then we'll just say so stop print line the names are different so now let's run this and as you can see the names are different but if we were to say 
that they're both Bucky. Then we get that the names are the same. And this is because this gets evaluated when we run this line. And if it's true, then this enters true. So we go into here. But if it's false, then we go out into here. And we can also switch these around if we want to and make this not equal to. That also works. And we can we can use any comparison. So now let's um, let's also have a look at the word length um, example we had in the last episode. So we had a variable called word, and it was set to a string that just spelled out interesting. And we want to say if word dot length is greater than or equal to ten. Um, then we're gonna say sister print line the word is long actually we'll say the word is very long um, so now as you can see um, this is longer than 10 so we do get a message saying that the word is very long we don't want just want to have two cases, so we don't want to say else sys print line the word is short because we also want to have one where it's not very long but it's long. So let's say that that would be five letters long, so greater than or equal to five, then it would be long, but it wouldn't be short yet. So we, we can't let it fall into this category. So we have to make another one in between these two. And the way we do that is by, um, it's almost the same. We, we just write else. And then instead of opening a, a new scope like this, we just say else if, and then add on other condition. And here we're just going to put word.length is greater than or equal to five. And then we put the bracket again. And here we're just going to do sister print line and we're going to say the word is long and then after that we just end it with a cur curly bracket again and we just add this else again so now if it's not greater than 10 and it's not greater than 5 it'll just say that it's short so Right now the word is very long, however if we were to remove some letters then as you can see now it's now it's eight letters long. It falls into this category but it doesn't yet fall into this category. So now we have these three cases and for the final one if we make it four letters then it will say that the word is short. So this is how we use if else if and else in hex i hope you found this video useful if you did please leave a like and if and if you think you would enjoy other videos in this series then there's a link to that playlist and also consider subscribing because then you'll get notified when i upload them but yeah that's all we're going to cover for today i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video